light being the important inducer of various plant processes including photosynthesis and photomorphogenesis so hello and welcome to my channel today we are going to discuss a very important protein which is involved in photomorphogenesis and that protein is known as phytochrome so this video is going to be in english if you are comfortable in hindi then you can switch to the video which is in hindi i will provide the link in the description box so let's get into this video so let us first discuss what is phytochrome so phytochrome is also known as a blue pigment or a chromoprotein its molecular weight is known to be 125 kilo deltons and it absorbs both red and far red lights it causes photomorphogenesis that is changes in the morphology of the organism based on the light intensity so there are two photoreversible forms which are present in phytochrome one is pr and another one is pfr PR is known to absorb light of 666 nanometer while PFR absorbs light of 730 nanometers these are photoreversible forms that is PR can be converted into PFR or PFR can be reverted back to PR depending on the light which is provided to the phytochrome The phytochrome is synthesized in the plastids mainly chloroplasts in all the plants under dark conditions so when there is dark condition the plant is going to synthesize pr form of phytochrome inside the chloroplasts now what is pr so pr is a bright blue colored substance or a protein which is found in inactive form it is synthesized in the etiolated seedlings that are dark grown seedlings and it absorbs red light and converts into pfr so pr is getting converted into pfr on the absorption of red light what is pfr so pfr is an olive green pigment which is found in active form is known to initiate various biological processes in the plant it absorbs far red light and gets converted into pr so pfr converts into pr in the presence of far red light so here is the essence of those two slides pr is getting converted into pfr and this process is getting reversed on the application of red light so pr converts into pfr in the presence of far red light while pfr gets converted into pr in the presence of red light now the pr is the inactive state while pfr is known to be the active state of the phytochrome so whenever the active form that is pfr is formed there would be certain responses or light induced responses in the plant there is also a dark reversion that is pfr can get converted into pr under dark conditions so next is what is the structure of phytochrome so phytochrome mainly occurs as a dimer having two polypeptide chains having 125 kilo deltons molecular weight each now the each monomer that is each polypeptide has a covalently attached chromophore chromophore is basically the pigment which absorbs light this chromophore is known as phytochromobilin and its structure is almost similar to the mammalian bile juice pigment that is bilirubin the precursor for the synthesis of phytochrome is delta amino levulonic acid and so apoprotein plus the chromophore is known as the holoprotein or the phytochrome so this is the structure of a phytochrome you can see there a, there are two domains one is photosensory domain and another is regulatory domain so this is the one polypeptide chain while this is another polypeptide chain so the the phytochrome is occurring as a dimer inside the plastids now the photosensory domain contains chromophores which absorbs light 
So what are the facts related to phytochrome? So phytochrome is known to exist as photostationary state where 97% of PR form is there and 3% is PFR. So the whole PFR cannot be converted into PR completely. Next is phytochrome can also absorb blue light. So it can absorb red light, far red light and blue light. Therefore, it is also known as blue pigment. The phytochrome also known to function as light regulated serine threonine kinases. So kinases are the enzymes which add phosphate to a particular amino acid. So here the phytochrome is acting as a light regulated kinase where the uh, light whenever there is presence of light the phytochrome can auto phosphorylate that is it has auto catalytic property. Next the photo reversible responses which are related to phytochrome were discovered by the experiments performed by Hendrix and Borthwick. So all the photoreversible responses which are related to phytochrome were discovered by the experiments of Hendrix and Borthwick. Now what is the gene which is encoding those polypeptide chains which are present in, as dimer in the phytochrome structure. So phytochrome proteins or polypeptides are encoded by phytochrome gene family that is PHY and this PHY has five members PHY A, B, C, D and E. These all are known to function under different conditions and gives rise to dif different phytochromes that is PR or PFR. Now what are the types of phytochrome? So there are two types of phytochromes one is type 1 and another one is type 2. So type 1 Phytochrome is known to be encoded by Phi A gene and it is abundant in etiolated plants that are dark grown plants and its concentration decreases on exposure to light. So it is light sensitive. So whenever there is presence of light, there would be transcriptional inhibition of type 2 proteins and mRNA degradation or even proteolysis of phytochrome proteins. Now the type 2 phytochrome is known to be encoded by four members of the gene family that is phi B, C, D and E. This is light stable so it is not photosensitive as the type 1 phytochrome and it is present in both light and dark grown plants. So whenever there is a light there would be expression of phi B only. So what are the different responses of phytochromes? So there are three known responses. So first response is VLFRs that are very low fluence responses. These are induced when the fluence is below 1 micromole per meter square. So what is fluence? So fluence is the number of photons which are striking on a unit surface area. So if the fluence is below 1 micromole per meter square then only VLFRs would occur and it is known that as the fluence is very low therefore very small amount of total phytochrome is being converted to PFR. Now it is also known that under VLFR's con condition, the far red light cannot reverse this response. So, if the PR is getting converted into PFR under the fluences below 1 micromole per meter square, then the far red light cannot reverse this response. It cannot convert PFR back to PR. So it follows law of reciprocity. Law of reciprocity indicates that the fluences which are occurring per unit time that is irradiance is inversely proportional to the fluence rate. 
Now, the another response is LFRs. So, LFRs are low fluence responses and these occur when the fluence is of 1 micromole per meter square. And it shows photoreversibility that is the PFR can again be converted into PR under far red light condition. So, far red light reverses this response and it also follows the law of reciprocity. So, you have to remember that VLFR does not show re photoreversibility but follow the law, law of reciprocity and LFRs also follow the law of reciprocity but also shows photoreversibility. Now, HIRs. HIRs are high irradiance responses and these occur when the fluence is above 1000 micromole per meter square and there is no photoreversibility. The PFR once formed cannot be converted back to PR and it does not follow law of reciprocity. So, these are very important responses of phytochromes. Now, what is the mechanism of action of phytochrome? So, uh, there is presence of inactive phytochrome inside the chloroplast and whenever li red light strikes the chromophore, there is activation of the phytochrome. This activation is autocatalytic and is performed due to the presence of serine threonine kinases. So, once the inactive phytochrome is getting converted into active phytochrome, there would be autophosphorylation of the phytochrome polypeptides. So, whenever the phosphate groups are attached to the phytochrome, it becomes activated and once activated, it is transported to the nucleus where it is going to affect the transcription of light response genes. So, this is the whole mechanism of action of phytochromes. It is very easy to understand. Next and last topic of this video is what are the functions of phytochromes. So, phytochromes are known to function in photoperiodic induction of flowering. So, it induces the photoperiodism and thus induces the flowering. It also known to help in chloroplast development but not chlorophyll formation. Next is it helps in leaf senescence, it also helps in leaf abscission and seed germination and stem elongation. So, these were the important functions of phytochromes. In the coming videos, we would be discussing about cryptochromes and phototrophin proteins which are the important topic of plant physiology. So, stay tuned. Goodbye.